This episode is brought to you by Netflix and Gamefly. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 11 of Food Mob, the interactive cooking show. Now, as you can see, we're somewhere completely different this week, which is, I'd love to say sunny San Francisco, but it's actually gray and dull, cold San Francisco, very much like Ireland. Not what's advertised uh, when you're expecting to come to California, but hopefully it's gonna pick up. We're in uh, Prager's apartment today with some of the guys behind the camera from River Vision 3, so good to see you guys. Are you gonna be uh, a lot more enthusiastic than Aaron? Try. <laughs> Aaron is uh, pretty serious. Yeah, Aaron is uh, pretty pissed that he's not here uh, to film this. But um, good news is he's editing it, so he'll get to see all the food but not taste it. Um, so we're going to be cooking something real nice this week, which is actually a beef Wellington. So lovely big fillet of beef wrapped up in uh, puff pastry. Delicious. Going to be feeding that to Kevin and Alex from Dignation. Um, so the pressure is very much on this week to, to, to make something really tasty. Uh, first off, we're going to jump into a few of last week's photos. So uh, first up, I've got a gorgeous looking pizza actually from somebody called RL Newbie. So he's made a really, really nice pizza there with what looks like um, goat cheese, I'm guessing, on there. Looks very, very tasty. Gorgeous little cute little photo from um, somebody saying that their daughter Aideen cooking up the blondies. Loads of people making the blondies. They're absolutely uh, very, very simple to, to make. So she's made them with her cute little kid, which is, uh, which is very sweet. Great to see cook, uh, people getting involved uh, at a young age with food mobs. We like that. Next, a quick question, somebody saying, just cooked your duck breast episode, looks nice. So that's duck breast from last week, which was kind of a little bit step up in quality, nice gourmet duck breast. But the duck looked rather pink in the middle. What are your rules of thumb for, um, for duck? So that's from C Full Love. Basically duck, no need to worry about it being pink. It's not like pork or chicken or something like that. You can cook it nice and pink and it becomes really nice and tender. And you might remember we rested it so all the juices flowed out and it was nice and soft. So you definitely want to cook it pink. Anything more than that and it'll be real, real sort of rubbery. You guys like duck? I love it. Do you? What about beef? Are you excited about today's beef? Yes. I'm very excited. Duck's a little fatty. Too much fat. Too much fat? Hard to, hard to eat around with that. It is, if you, but if you, make the, if you make it like the fat nice and crispy, it's yeah. really nice. Or like the pancakes rolled up, do you have those here? Like where you, you get like crispy duck and then you put like cucumber and salad, yeah. no? Yeah, fried duck that's hanging, hanging in the Asian. Yeah, market. that's real good. Yeah. There's no point trying to better them at doing that because they do it so good. You're better off, uh, you don't chop, want to chop the whole thing up with a cle meat cleaver. Yeah, last thing you want is ducks hanging around your house. <laughs> um, right. Beef uh, Wellington, real, real nice dish. I'm not going to lie to you, again, it's a little bit of a step up. Um, there's a few sort of skills involved, but luckily, check this out, Prager's knife. That is an expensive knife. Um, very nice kitchen as well, I must say. I don't know, I haven't actually asked him if he's good at cooking, but I'm looking at, some, looking at his knife, looking at his truffle salt, which is really, really nice. I'm guessing he's a good cook. We'll have to, have to impress him. What am I going to start with? I'm going to start by trimming up our beef. So. Fillet of beef, real um, top end, very, very good quality beef. I think you got this in Whole Foods, right? Yeah. Whole Foods, not gonna lie to you, it's pretty expensive. This is the sort of dish that you might cook for sort of the family at Christmas time or real special dish if, you know, if you've got the whole family coming over. You're not gonna be cooking it every single day of the week because um, it is expensive. But as a one-off treat, absolutely gorgeous. So we're trimming these little bits of sinew away. If we left those on, very much like the duck last week, what would happen is it would all sort of contract up while you were cooking it. You don't want to get rid of this stuff here though, that's fat, that's going to be absolutely crucial um, in keeping it nice and moist and really, really tasty. Just trim off that one there. Very, very careful, this meat is literally um, expensive, so you, you really don't want to waste any of it at all. So that's it. What we're going to do with that is we're just going to season it up, so a little bit of Prager's lovely Salt, I think there's a little bit of pepper in there as well. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that over. It's got, smell that. It's got literally got truffles, truffle oil or pieces of truffle in it. Oh man. So good, eh? So that is gonna do most of the sort of, I'll put a little bit extra. That's gonna do most of the hard work for us, um, flavor wise, absolutely delicious. Gonna pop a little bit of olive oil onto it. 
and I'm popping my frying pan on. For any of you who were there, I think in the first episode when we made perfect steak, we wanted a real hot uh, temperature in the frying pan. Same thing again this week. So rub that truffle salt in. Don't worry about it if it's not truffle salt, just go with regular salt. We're not all as uh, high-end as Prager in his apartment. Don't have truffle salt lying around. So rub that in. Absolutely gorgeous. Just gonna wash my hands. We're gonna try and cook this uh, nice and sort of medium rare pink in the center. How do you guys like your beef? Do you like it a bit bloody or are you scared of the blood or? Love the blood. So everybody's looking for medium rare. Makes my job easier. Obviously something like this, you can't really cook it two different ways. It's all gonna be the same, so medium rare it is. Now, into our pan, little drizzle of oil. And the key here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to seal all those flavors in. So we want a golden brown all around the outside. And listen for the sizzle. This is exactly what you're listening for. Okay, so if I flip this over now, check out that color. That is exactly what you're looking for. You want real golden brown caramelization, getting all those natural sugars really nicely caramelized. Now, as we brown off the other side, I'm flipping that chopping board. I've washed my knife, and we're now gonna make a little sort of duck cell, which is basically mushrooms and onions, really, really finely diced. I've got some gorgeous wild mushrooms here, which the guys have got for me. Um, where from? From Whole Foods as well? Yep. Very nice. Must have uh, set you back quite a bit in the shop, today's ingredients. Yeah, but how often are you have? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> well worth it for, for something that's probably gonna feed like six or seven of us. I mean, you're probably talking, I'm not exaggerating, maybe a hundred bucks for today's, today's meal altogether, maybe a little less, maybe 80 bucks. But if you think it's gonna feed six or seven people, it's something that you, you, know, you wanna invite your special friends over to cook. Really not that expensive. What's that, like 10, 15 bucks each? It's not gonna break the bank. So, dicing an onion. Basically cutting about three quarters of the way through. I think I actually showed you this on an episode a couple of weeks ago. Cutting all the way nearly back again. And then you'll think, wow, this is such a good knife. I don't think Prager will mind it. He's gonna be looking for the knife tomorrow and it's gonna be back in Ireland. So, nice little fine dice. Right, fill it. I'm just gonna grab him and bring him over here. And look at that, that is a serious piece of meat. So clearly what we've done there is we've sealed in all the juices. So if we didn't do that, we'd put it in the pastry and it would sort of leak out and it'd be bloody and the pastry would be wet and be basically disgusting. So we're just gonna let that rest. Loads of flavor in it already. Now, with these, check out these beautiful big mushrooms. Absolutely gorgeous. These are gonna give so much flavor to the, to the dish. It's gonna be absolutely stunning. Actually, um, Aaron, uh, we've made tons of videos, myself and Aaron, and he's the one who really benefits. I never actually get to eat it. Um, he benefits, and, and I asked him, I was like, look, I'm going over to cook for the guys in Revision 3, and Kevin and Alex from Dig Nation. What would be the, you know, what would be the one dish over the three, three years we've been working together that, that, you'd, uh, that you'd want the most? And he was like, the beef wellington, hands down. So, should be tasty, hopefully. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna run our knife through these real fast. You could do this in a food processor. I just I think that the sort of like too much moisture comes out of the mushrooms then, so I just prefer doing it this way. It's gonna take you a few minutes, but we wanna get them as fine as possible. Good thing about this dish is there's a lot of preparation in advance, as you can see, like this does take time. But once it's ready, you can just whack it in the oven and it doesn't, you don't really need to worry about it then. That's the hard work done. Um, so if you've got a, like a dinner party or guests coming over, just make it in the afternoon, have it ready in the fridge, and then just pop it into the oven. Great uh, dish for a dinner party in that respect. So you can see that getting real nice and small now. We're nearly there. Okay, I think that's small enough. If you're doing it in a sort of a fine dining restaurant or something, you might go even smaller, but for what we're doing today, I think that is perfect. Now, 
You'll notice that I didn't um, throw this pan away that I was doing the beef in. The reason for that is there's tons of flavor in there. We really don't want to lose that. So I'm going to pop it back on to heat up a little bit. I'm going to look for a little knob of butter down here. You guys, at least you're here this week, you can correct me. People are always correcting me on the Irish or like English American terminology. So we've got different, different words for everything. So you guys can, uh, have I done any bad ones so far? The one that always gets me is, what do you call uh, cling film? Surround wrap? What? Surround wrap? Cling film. Cling film. Cling film. Yeah, it's weird. That's what it is. Surround wrap is a brand name. Oh, is it? But we call adhesive strips band-aids, too. Yeah. And that's just the brand name? Oh, okay. Brand names that we just call, you Okay. Same like Ziploc bags. That's that's a brand, isn't it? We call it, we say fillet. Oh, fillet. Yeah. That's so look, as you can see in there, two huge knobs of butter. So like I was saying, this is, you know, a real treat. It's not something you're making every day. So I know it's not super healthy, but we're going to burst loads of flavor in there with, with these mushrooms. So we want to want to get some nice butter going in there. And you can see it's sort of frothing up. You know when you have butter and it's sort of greasy and it just sort of drips over the dish. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for that like kind of nutty texture that you get from butter. So um, just bring it up to the boil like that. And in there, we're going to pop our mushrooms and onions. And we're just going to sweat those down for like four or five minutes. Just really want to get that golden brown nutty flavor. So pop them back on. OK, so you can see some loads of nice flavor coming in there. I'm going to pop on some carrots, just little roast carrots. Prager's just walked in there. How are you, Prager? I'm good. I'm good, thanks. We've taken your whole kitchen over. Nice. I'm very proud. Yeah, luckily, we've actually been saying nice things about all the... Like, I can't believe your knife. That's pretty impressive. Oh, nice. Thanks. Oh, that knife. That, came, yeah. that was purchased as a house when we gave from Brad Murphy. Yeah, well, I was just saying, tell Brad that it's coming back to Ireland with me, so... <laughs> The uh, truffle salt as well, very nice. I, I say this like throwing a Michelin star on your food. Yeah, exactly. So you're a bit of a closet, uh, closet gourmet, are you? Uh, I try. I try. Well, it's only because I want to try to impress the ladies and then you can yeah. learn. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can learn more from you. Cool. <laughs> well, we're cooking up some beef wellington today, so hopefully you're uh, check out that piece of meat that we're going to. That's amazing. So just as a little uh, accompaniment, very rustic carrots, so just um, a bit of thyme in there, a bit of olive oil, a little bit of the truffle salt, in that goes. Basically, you put that on anything, it makes it taste amazing, eh? and just toss those up. That's all we're going to do, we're just going to pop them into the oven. Might drizzle a little bit of honey or something on them when they come out to sort of sweeten them up, but real easy side dish. Now you can see the mushrooms, mushroom and uh, onion duck cell coming along nicely. Really looking for more of a sort of golden brown um, color on there. Okay, yeah, so next thing we're going to do is the pastry. Now, I was actually having a quick look around the kitchen and I don't think, do you have a, do you have a rolling pin, Prager? A what? A rolling pin? Ooh. It's good if you don't, so don't worry. Oh. You don't, cool. So, no, it, it's, I, I just wanted to show you a quick little tip because I'm guessing a lot of, go uh, if you had a little, that would be cool. We're making it up as we go along this week because we're not in the, in the normal kitchen. But I was just saying it's a good, good uh, example to use if Prager doesn't have a rolling pin because a lot of guys are going to be making this or, or girls and they're not going to have a rolling pin at all at home. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Basically just a bottle of wine. Give it a little dust off with maybe um, like a kitchen towel or something to make sure there's no dirt on there. So we're basically just going to roll it out. So this is puff pastry now. You can make puff pastry at home. It's a fucking pain in the ass. It takes like six hours. I think the last time I made it was a couple of years ago. This stuff that you can get now in the shops, just as good. No point uh, putting yourself through a load of pain to make it. Because you've got to, they make it with butter and stuff and they basically turn it like six or seven times as you're making it back in the fridge. Real pain in the ass, so don't worry about that. We don't want it too thin. Just basically nice square. Pastry's ready. Potatoes are on there. I'm actually just going to throw a couple of bits of thyme in with the mushrooms. Thyme, the most aromatic. Do you guys use thyme much? Smell that. 
So you can just imagine the flavors from that, the sea salts, everything going in there. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous. So just pick a few of those in there. It's starting to get a bit of color, which is good. Uh, a pastry brush, I'm guessing you don't have. Pastry what? Brush, like you know a little brush. Oh, you do? I'm impressed. Awesome. Sorry, this one. Perfect. It's like a painting brush, isn't it? So basically using a little bit of Dijon mustard, uh, French, French type mustard. Use whatever you've got, um, but Dijon really does have an awesome flavor, so I think we wanna, wanna try and keep it as authentic as possible. So in that goes, just brush it all around the outsides. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna roll the mushrooms in that in a second, so that's gonna act basically like glue. So we're basically uh, gonna use that to stick the mushrooms to it. If I go back to my mushrooms, Tons of flavor in there. That's absolutely awesome. I cannot begin to describe how flavorsome those are. So, using a spoon, just gonna spread them around our puff pastry. You excited for this, guys? <laughs> I think I was gonna cook for you a while back when you were in Dublin, and then I was sick. I was literally, uh, Prager came over to Dublin for, you are speaking at a conference, I think. Yep. And uh, I was gonna cook and then I just got wiped out, uh, literally in bed for a couple of days. How long were you in Dublin for, like a couple of days? Uh, about three days. The, uh, the folks over at... Uh, Steve. In Steve was Cormac. Uh, the conference was the... Uh, next wave, first wave, next wave? Uh, next no. Wave? No, that's the Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, um, he'll kill me. I know Steve, he'll kill me for not remembering it, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Right, so you've seen what I've done there? I'm actually going to just whack those mushrooms on top. No point wasting them. So, basically, pastry, mushrooms, beef in the center. You can see how this is going to be just incredible to eat. Now, this is the tricky part. Just get your hands on there and squeeze it up. Now, we're just going to tuck that pastry in, so it's fairly, don't worry if there's a little bit of escape in there, we'll just push it back in and just flip it over. Oh, that's where the flour comes in there. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're improvising, we're doing good. Now, little uh, baking sheet here, I'd normally have a little bit of flour, oil does just the same job. Okay, so very, very gently, just lifting underneath it, we're just going to pop him on there. One final thing that we're going to do that's really going to bring this um, together really sort of aesthetically and make it look nice is a little bit of egg wash. You gave me a second brush, didn't you? Yeah, it did. It's still in the drawer there. Okay. Just finding our way around the kitchen. It's always tricky when you're uh, working in somebody else's kitchen just to get used to stuff. But we're getting there. Okay, so. Nice little uh, brush of egg wash. Now this is when you see pastry that comes out of the oven that's real golden brown and uh, absolutely perfect. Egg wash is what does that. So just all around the outside. Should be enough to feed, um, many of us is there four, probably about six or seven. Should be, uh, should be perfect. We won't have trouble finding that many people. No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you want to tell too many people when you taste it. You want to eat it yourself. Okay, so that's ready. Now we're gonna pop it into the oven. It's gonna take about half an hour. When it comes out, it's gonna be golden brown and absolutely delicious. So, in that goes. And like I was saying, if you're doing a dinner party or anything like that, everything's done now. Beef's in the oven, carrots are in the oven. That's just a case of taking them out. And our mash will make just as the beef is ready. So everything's ready. We're just gonna clean down and then we'll be ready to eat our gorgeous beef wellington. So guys, the beef's been in there for about 15 minutes at this stage. I'll just have a quick open of the door. You can see it's starting to get golden brown, really, really nice. Our carrots are down there, it smells absolutely incredible. There's loads of hungry people have just walked in. There's more and more people appearing as we get closer to the, to the beef wellington being ready. Um, the mashed potato is gonna take about another five minutes. We'll make that just before the beef's ready. 10 minutes to go on the beef, I'll tell you about our first sponsor this week, which is Gamefly. Now, Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice from over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. If you want to support the show, go along to gamefly.com forward slash foodmob, a couple of discount codes there. Fantastic way of getting your games online. Any of you guys, gamers, use, do you? Yeah, yeah. Use it. Very nice. And so t tell me about Gamefly, just go along, get the games, straight in, watch them. 
happy day. So if you're, if you're gaming in any way, please support the show. Go along to food, or gamefly.com forward slash foodmob. Good time to tell you about our own Twitter account as well, which is twitter.com forward slash foodmobtv. Keep the photos coming in. Really impressed with all your, your photos and blog posts that you've been sending in. Ten minutes to go on the beef. It's getting exciting. So guys, the beef has been in there for another ten minutes. Luckily, I've got a couple of guys here who are uh, pretty interested in tasting it. Absolutely. How are you doing, guys? We've heard yeah. nothing but good things about your beef. <laughs> Very excited to try your beef. Yes. So, there it is. I'm just going to grab it out. Holy crap. Really? Looks like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> this is chicken Wellington. That's what the Wellington stands for. So we're just going to let that... Uh, it's going to rest for like two or three minutes and we'll just finish off a couple of other little, uh, little things. And there's baby carrots. Baby carrots. Just baby basically. Good. Dude, I love me some baby carrots. Honey baby carrots with rosemary? A little drizzle of honey. No. Prayer is uh, amazing triple, so it's not a... Uh, I've had this before. Oh, what? Mm. That should just be put on everything. Everything. Default. On that goes. That is going to be freaking good. You know it's about $70, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I bought that for a gift once. That is the most expensive salt you'll ever buy. It's worth every penny. Though. Yeah. I think that might be uh, part of the turn. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Starboard. Okay, amazing. so the last thing we've got is a bit of mash. I'm just going to strain those off. I feel like we should be helping. I know. I mean, not really, but... <laughs> so, back in there. I'm just going to keep it real simple. Again, truffle salt. This is huge. Another $20? Yeah. Figures yeah. over there having a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> so, just a bit of mash. Bash it up. Is that like an official potato masher? It is. I think it's pretty, it's, uh, a pretty small one, isn't it? That's <laughs> kind of hard work. I'm going to send you on that. <laughs> <laughs> So the beef wrong is resting. So just pop that second one, it's tiny, you can see how it's nice and medium rare in the center, which is exactly what you're looking for. This stuff here, which you guys didn't see earlier, is mushroom duck cell, so we're talking like... Mushroom duck salsa? <laughs> duck cell. Oh, duck so, cell, I was so, like, so, mushroom duck salsa? That sounds so weird and awesome. <laughs> just mushrooms, truffle, a uh, little bit of onion. Got it. Awesome. And it was slowly cooked so in there. fresh truffle that you got? Or? No, Prager's, uh, Prager's all-encompassing truffle salt. So up Love that it. goes on top. Give this one a bit of pastry. Nice. And that's pretty much it. You don't need a sauce with it because it kind of should be moist enough and should be absolutely... It's, it's already saucy. It's it exactly. Wow. I'll give you guys a knife and fork to get tucked in. Phenomenal. Thank you, Thank you so much, man. No worries at all. Thank you, sir. Now, as the guys are tucking into that, they look pretty happy. I'm going to tell you about our second sponsor this week, which is Netflix. So, a great way of watching movies on Netflix. You can get them to your, straight to your computer, you can get them on your PS3, you can get them to your Roku player. Really, really simple way. All the latest titles on there. Fantastic way of getting your movies. Head along there, support the show. You can get discounts by going along to netflix.com forward slash foodmob. Loads of great discounts. Support the show. And the yeah. mash is good. What is it just... Regular just pepper. Yeah, keep it simple. Yeah. Mmm. Super flaky. Yeah. Dude, the fillet is perfect. I feel like I'm gonna tell me to cook my fillets, man. Mmm. That is awesome. You wanna want try a little bit? Yeah. No. So Prager's the only person who's left to taste it. There's also four or five other people there who are waiting to get stuck in. There's enough there for at least six or seven. It's absolutely gorgeous. Really enjoying being here in San Francisco. Awesome food. Hopefully taught you how to make a, a delicious beef wellington, which is definitely a little bit expensive, a little bit fancy, but you can feed six or seven people, and I think it's an absolute winner. So that's it for this week's episode of Food Mob. Back in Ireland next week, but uh, enjoyed our time over here. Cheers, guys.